seven years into the new millennium, the most powerful nation on earth wrestles with its problems. Nearly 300 million Americans tax an aging infrastructure. A quarter billion vehicles of every description elbow for space on our highways. Environmental concerns of the 1990s have become 21st century priorities. And yet, incredibly, reliance on the automobile throughout most of North America not only continues, it accelerates, except where logic prevailed. On the Florida Peninsula, the Florida Overland Express sprints along the eastern edge of a rejuvenated Everglades. first high-speed rail system. Barely 30 minutes out of its modern passenger terminal within the Miami airport complex, the Fox will arrive in Orlando an hour from now. Less than 60 minutes from its Orlando departure, the Fox will breathe the still morning air of Tampa. Among the 300 passengers, business travelers, families, students and tourists, some are just along for the ride. For them, the Florida Overland Express is the destination. The history of Florida's high-speed rail system has been well documented. Before the turn of the century, in the 1990s, the Florida Department of Transportation presented an innovative plan to make the system a reality. The idea was to create a long-term partnership with the private sector to establish an easily expandable, practical, maintainable, appreciating asset a safe, comfortable system to immediately connect Miami, Orlando, and Tampa, and soon after, Jacksonville. Eventually, other business, tourism, and population centers would be included. It was to be an efficient system, publicly owned, privately built, and operated. The private sector partner was chosen. It was the Florida Overland Express Group, a consortium comprised of four of the most respected names in transportation, construction, program management, and infrastructure. There was Fleur Daniel, the largest publicly traded engineering and construction company in the United States with unquestioned worldwide management and maintenance capabilities. They were responsible for Miami's Metro Mover and more than 290 other significant projects throughout the state of Florida. There was Odebrecht Contractors of Florida, civil construction experts in 21 countries on four continents, responsible for the expansion of Dade County's mammoth Golden Glades Interchange one of the largest and most complex interchanges in the world. There was Bombardier, a world-class manufacturer of transportation equipment and the largest provider of rail cars in North America. It was Bombardier that manufactured and supplied rail cars for the newly expanded Tri-Rail and the Tampa Airport People Mover. And there was Jacques Alstom, an internationally acknowledged leader in the field of energy and rail transport, developer of proven TGV train technology, utilized in creating the fastest, safest passenger trains in the world. That was the team in 1995. It is still the team in 2007. And just look at what the Florida Overland Express Group has created and maintained. Dad, the shuttle's here! Things are different in the year 2007. There's a greater awareness of how costly it is to maintain a highway system. We still drive cars, of course, but we drive them less. Intermodal connections, like the Fox's own door-to-door -door shuttle service, have made the automobile just another travel option. Other passengers arrive in clean, modern train stations via newly expanded bus and light rail systems. How's Dylan? Great, he says hello. So listen, as soon as we get on the train, we're going to fire off some faxes, and then we'll have some breakfast. How about breakfast first? I fax better on a full stomach. Okay, we'll make the dining car our first stop. Oh, let's go. Great. Almost there, guys. Right. here we go. Almost on the thing. All right, let's get going. Woo! All right. 
bags are checked curbside and are automatically routed with you to your final destination. Thanks. We're and that's forward. particularly convenient if you're making an airline connection. Orlando, sir. Yep, that's right. Orlando. Check it straight through for you. Thank you. No, honey, but he's waiting for us in Orlando. Is he going to take me fishing? I think he just might do that. Now arriving on track one, the Florida Overland Express from Tampa and Orlando. Arrivando en el carril número uno, el Florida Overland Express de Tampa y Orlando. Yeah, this is a man. You know, I don't know a soul in Miami. I just like to ride this thing. Hey, man, don't even worry about it until we're north of West Palm Beach. Wait a minute. That means that I have less than an hour to try to figure out how to tell my parents about those grades? Well, if you had a 4.0 like me, you'd have nothing to worry about. That's right. Get out of here. No way invited you. Mom, the train's here. Come on. Come on, guys. Let's get going, yeah. In a little while, we're going to get a train's eye view of the Everglades. Come on, sweetie, let's go this way. Let's go, all right. Watch out for the alligator. Oh, I think the alligator's better. Watch out for you. And come on over here and sit on this side. Where are you? Get over here now. No, honey, but he's waiting for us in Orlando. Cool. Mike, don't wander too far, okay? Okay, Dad. Excuse me. But I think I can figure this out. Hi, I'm Mike. What are you doing? I'm Mike. It's a little hard to explain. Looks like a computer modem to me. Think you're pretty smart, little man, huh? Hmm. Looks like you're trying to download a GIF file from the server through an ice scan fiber optic link. Like I said, I'm downloading this GIF file. In the past 12 months alone, more than 5 million passengers have enjoyed the speed, convenience, comfort, and safety of the Florida Overland Express. Electric power moves the Florida Overland Express quickly and efficiently along its new state-of-the-art network of tracks. Train and track noise is kept to a minimum. There is no 24-hour highway roar, just the occasional whoosh as the train glides by. The right-of-way uses just a fraction of the land required for new highways. Special pass-throughs have been created for wildlife, while unobtrusive fencing keeps them safe from passing trains. And how does this new system affect the roads that cross its path? Actually, not at all. There are no automobile crossings anywhere along the train's route. Roads over or under the tracks keep automobile traffic moving smoothly. And raised tracks allow for undisturbed boat traffic along Florida's waterways. Hi, I'm Mike. Are you someone's grandma and grandpa? Yes, we are. And there are six other someones waiting for us in Orlando. My grandpa's waiting for me at the station. But while the Fox prides itself on its quiet presence, its impact on Florida's economy has been anything but. Construction of the system in the late 1990s and the first few years of the 21st century created thousands of new jobs for Floridians. When the system started running, additional jobs were created on the trains, in the stations, and in the construction of intramodal transportation systems 
that link the Florida Overland Express to airports, seaports, and most important, to the homes and businesses of Floridians everywhere. Hi. Hi. Is this your first time on a train? Uh, yeah. It's my first time too. Hi. Hi. And then there are the tourists. Not only has a high-speed rail system enabled more tourists than ever to see more of Florida than ever, it has become a tourist attraction in itself. If Florida's high-speed rail system had been built without negative impact on the state's sensitive environment, that in itself would have been an accomplishment. But its positive impact has been undeniable. As an attractive alternative to auto travel, the system has helped improve Florida's air quality and lessen the need for highway construction. A new levee was built along the edge of the Everglades to help the Water Management District fulfill its mandate to protect the fragile environment. The levee was able to accommodate the tracks and the benefits continue to grow. Water management groups were able to maintain fresh water within the delicate ecosystem and keep salt water from leaching into the glades. The levee also slowed the encroachment of runaway development and served as the perfect platform for the longest new bike path in North America, the Eastern Everglades Bikeway, nearly 60 miles long from Miami to West Palm Beach. The arrival of the Fox created even greater awareness of the Everglades by exposing its grandeur to millions of awestruck passengers. Suddenly, the glades were everyone's concern. The Fox was a perfect match for the environment. Clean, swift, and remarkably quiet. Do you know why this train is so quiet? I don't know. Do you know? Yeah, sure. It's because the, um, the... Uh, it's the continuous welded rail. Tickets, please. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Ten years ago, a high-speed rail system for the state of Florida was just a dream. In other parts of the world, the system was a reality. France had one. England and Belgium had one. And Korea's was already underway. Germany had one, and so did Japan. Spain, Sweden, Norway, and the Netherlands were also reaping the many benefits of high-speed trains. Today, Florida alone among the 50 states enjoys the Florida Overland Express. And you have every right to ask, who paid for this transportation miracle? Who made the investment of billions of dollars in Florida's future? It was a unique partnership of private and public investors. The Florida Department of Transportation treated the proposed high-speed rail system much like a highway project except that private investors would bear much of the financial responsibility. Private sector expertise brought FDOT's vision to life by designing, financing, building, and continuing to operate the Florida Overland Express. Even though the infrastructure they built, this continually appreciating asset, is owned by the state of Florida. And the state's part of the partnership? Initially, Florida reallocated just a small portion of its annual transportation budget dollars derived from existing gasoline taxes and other transportation revenues. Dollars that were already earmarked for Florida transportation. By any standard, this was a sound public investment. The expertise and financial stability of the Fox Consortium members brought our high-speed railroad up to speed. The Florida Overland Express has been a financial success for the state and the residents of Florida. It has generated steadily increasing revenues and has provided a consistent flow of income to the state. By making an investment in the least intrusive form of modern transportation, Florida found a way to keep the state an attractive environment for its residents and for economic growth. And now, in the year 2007, while the rest of North America examines the success of the Florida Overland Express, the following of our air and increasing demands on our highway system continue. Except in Florida, where logic prevailed.